In this video, we would be looking at 5 critical diagrams to help you improve your calculation. And this video is going to be very essential for all those who really want to improve their calculation. So I don't want to waste any further time, so let's start. So we have the position number 1 on our board. We are playing with the white pieces. And here black plays the move queen to d5 check. It's a very easy puzzle. Try to pause the video and try to find the best move for white in this position. Try to calculate. Okay, so in the game, white made a bad move, which was king f2. And basically here, black simply went on to trade the queens. And still, it's better for white, but it took white 52 moves to win the game, which is a very long game. At the place of king f2, if you found the move rook to e4, kudos to you, it's the best move. What's happening? After rook e4, white's idea is to simply capture on f6. So you kind of have to defend the f6 pawn, which is the only way is to play queen f5 in order to protect the pawn. But here white can already play an id3, attacking the queen, kicking the queen back because the queen is not really having any other square. And now simply rook f to e6. So what's basically happened here, the queen simply went on to a passive square and now white simply blocked it. And now queen into f6 is unstoppable and white is completely winning position. So yeah, this is the best version at the place of what happened in the game king f2 which black able to trade out the queen but though white was able to win the game but if you have a better calculation then you will see the move rook e4 and eventually knight e3 and rook e6 and that's how top players play. So this was the diagram number one so now let's move on to the diagram number two. Okay. So we have the diagram number 2 on our board, we are playing with the white pieces and here black plays the move queen to d7 in this position. And after queen d7, here's my question. It's a bit lengthy variation, you must try to calculate hard. You can take around 10 to 15 minutes also, try to calculate each and every variation. Pause the video and try to find the best variation for white. Okay. So after queen d7, the position is already very interesting. White is already having the bishop pair. And the best way to use the bishop pair is to really open up the position. So the bishop on b2 is kind of blocked. So if you found the move first of all d5, exactly that's the move, congratulations. You sacrifice the pawn, but eventually by sacrificing the pawn, you are getting a very good initiative by attacking the opponent's king. After d5, black is having two ways of recapturing the pawn on d5, with the knight and with the queen. You, If you have not really solved this puzzle, try to pause the video now and try to calculate both the variation. Okay, so here first let's try to discuss what happens if queen into d5. Queen into d5 is simply a bad move because of bishop f6. And if you try to capture the bishop, I can happily capture the rook in this position and white is already having a exchange up. So you kind of have to capture the bishop back and now the best is to play queen g4 check. And now if you found the move, a very interesting move, you can pause the video if you have not yet found the move. Queen to h4. And the, basically the whole point here is you threaten mate in one and queen h4 is actually a brilliant move. The whole point here is you sacrifice the bishop, check, and now knight f5 and now white is mating via knight h6 or you can also play queen g7 it's it's still a mate so going back after bishop f6 gf6 queen g4 check all those who thought can we play bishop h7 it's not really working because first of all king h7 is winning for white after knight f5 and there is mate for black so but the whole point here is it's not checkers that like black is not really obliged to take the piece, but instead black is having a very strong move. Queen into g2 check, takes and after knight 2 e4 e5 check, it's a check and black is really going to recapture the queen and now it would be an even position. So that's the whole problem that bishop into h7 is not the best. So this is exactly what happens if black captures the pawn on d5 with the queen. If black goes for capturing the pawn with the knight, here comes the most interesting variation. After knight d5, 
bishop into h7 check a brilliant move once again you sacrifice the bishop and not only one bishop queen h5 check and here we have double bishop sacrifice another brilliant move by white white side is pretty simple queen h8 is a checkmate so if black tries to capture the bishop knight f5 check if the king goes back queen g5 check followed by queen g7 is a mate so here if king to f6 in this position already queen to g5 mate so the best move is to play queen f5 and after queen f5 you can already evaluate the position it's winning for white because black is a like black is not having a queen though black is having three minor pieces but the main problem here is the king black king is extremely weak and white is winning so going back after bishop into g7 black is still not really obliged to take the bishop you must consider your opponent's best resource or best defense in any position so after bishop into g7 you must always try to consider moves like f6 f5 which kind of makes a path for your opponent's queen to defend the king so for example f5 and now still white side he has to play queen h8 check capture the rook and here simply check and on the next move white is going to capture the queen and black is, ha is having a completely lost position so this is how you must focus on your calculation so this was the second diagram a very interesting one but a bit lengthy but if you were able to solve the complete variation simply kudos to you your level is extremely high so now let's move on to the third position okay so we have the third position on our board we are playing with the white pieces and here black plays the move rook to e6 i want all of you guys to pause the video and try to calculate the best variation for white okay so after rook to e6 what's happening in this position first of all it looks like black is having a very weak pawn structure on the queen side and at the same time black king is very weak on the king side compared to white's very healthy king so basically the whole purpose of this diagram here is not to get distracted by these weak pawns on the queen side but instead go for this weak king on h7 so if you were really be able to find the found the move e4 simply kudos to you so what's happening after e4 there are three ways for black generally to respond in any kind of position black can either capture the rook capture the pawn or not really capture anything and play a move like maybe rook f6 or anything so basically here if black tries to play rook to f6 we can happily capture the pawn on f5 and now everything is weak for black and black is already having a bad position so rook f6 is not a good move if you try to capture the whole rook which is the most critical variation we capture the pawn in this position attacking the queen and also the rook so if you try to move your queen back to f6 i can capture the rook and now simply a check rook f6 and now we can simply capture the pawn black is a pawn down and white is having a completely winning position because of black's weak king going back this is exactly what happens if queen f6 if black tries to sacrifice the queen for two rooks which makes sense after takes you must evaluate the position that after obviously if gf5 you can take it's a check and after rook g6 you capture the rook it's winning for white but if black plays rook e5 as i said black is not really obliged to take the pawn so after rook to e5 takes checks you must evaluate this position correctly that this position is better for white because black king is extremely weak white is having a good position and white is better so this is exactly what happens if your opponent captures the rook if your opponent goes for capturing the pawn in this position after f into e4 simply rook into e4 your queen is attacked and you if you try to move your queen like if queen g7 you are losing the rook so you have to give up the queen but now it's a losing position for black so that's ex exactly what happens if you have this position and your opponent plays rook e6 you must find the move e e4 after a thorough calculation and you are winning the game so this was the third position so now let's move on to the fourth position okay so we have the fourth position on our board this time we are playing with the black pieces and here our opponent played the move bishop to e3 attacking the rook and one thing that i want to clear here is 
white have already moved his king so white white can't really go for a short castle so here is the position bishop e3 black is already a piece down so try to pause the video and try to find the best move or variation for black in this position okay so after bishop e3 like what are the options available maybe bishop into d1 looks practical maybe but the best move is to play rook into e4 because here if you try to capture the knight first basically the whole point is after rook into d1 rook e4 takes takes king f2 and basically the bishop is protected and the rook protects the rook so this is completely winning position for white white is the rook up and completely winning position so bishop d1 is already a bad move the best move is rook e4 so basically after rook into e4 we are already planning to capture the bishop so you can have to capture the rook takes and now the rook on h1 is simply hanging you have to move the rook and here comes the main move in the position if you really be able to found this move kudos to you rook to d8 basically bringing the last piece into the game if you thought of the move like bishop into d1 it's not really working because after rook d1 bishop e3 it looks like maybe black is winning but queen to d3 and you you are kind of forced to trade off the queen or white can play queen e2 on the next move or rook d3 and white is having a completely better position so that's the whole point bishop into d1 is not the best but rook d8 bringing the last piece into the game and now there are a couple of ideas for black already rook d3 is winning up attacking the queen and the bishop and like you have joined your last piece into the game now bishop into d1 is strong rook into d1 is strong and the position is completely falling apart for white if you even found the move rook e8 it's still like a winning position for black i will give you still the full points so this is how you can play and after rook d8 or rook e8 you can already clarify and evaluate the position that black is having a completely winning position so if you were really able to solve the position congratulations so now let's move on to the final diagram of the day okay so we have the last and the final diagram of the day this time we are playing with the white pieces and here black played the move bishop to b2 attacking the rook so i want all of you guys to pause the video and try to find the best variation for white in this position okay so after bishop b2 what are the candidates move available for white after bishop b2 the rook is attacked and we have to protect the pawn obviously so the two candidates move i am able to see is bishop g5 check obviously we start with the check and second play rook c4 protecting the pawn and at the same time attacking the bishop obviously rook d3 is not the move because bishop b5 attacking the rook and you have to move the rook and after bishop into e5 it's a check and black is already having a better position so going back rook d3 is obviously not the best move So after bishop b2, if you were really be able to found the move, bishop g5 is check. Kudos to you. First, let's discuss what is wrong with rook to c4, attacking the bishop and at the same time protecting the pawn. After rook c4, black can already play bishop b7, pulling the bishop back. And the whole point here is, after bishop g5 check, king e8, the c8 square is already covered by the rook, uh, by the bishop, and the rook is not really having any particular entry point for the rook. If you try to move your rook, black can already capture the pawn, give a check and black is already having a better position. So that's the whole point. This particular variation is not really working. You start with bishop g5 check and if you found this congratulations. Your opponent has to play king d7. Your opponent can't really play king e king e8 because of rook check and you lose the rook. So king d7 and now comes the move rook to c4 attacking the bishop. The whole point here is now the bishop is not really having the d7 square and the bishop must cover the c c6 square from the from the opponent's pieces so you have to play something like b5 if you play the move bishop to b5 white can already play rook b4 and you're losing the piece so let's say b5 and now already bishop check your king have to your opponent's king have to enter on the c5 and already bishop into b5 check and your opponent loses the bishop and eventually the game 
Going back a bit, at the place of b5, if your opponent simply moves the bishop, for example to d1, already bishop check and still the same variation, bishop f3 check and you, your opponent still loses the bishop. So the whole point of this variation was to calculate bishop g5 check, rook c4 and try to say that you can already assess this position. After b5, you must not stop, never. You must calculate bishop c6 check, bishop into b5 and from this point of onwards you can stop your calculation and already evaluate the position that white is having a completely winning position. So if you were able to find this variation, congratulations to you and tell, make sure to tell me in the comment box below how many puzzles you were able to solve. And if you were able to solve all five, your level is simply brilliant. So if you learned anything new today from this particular video, make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel. It's free for you but it helps us to motivate to make more videos like this. I'm going to come up with these interesting videos like this. So till then stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.